So let's take a look at a generic smart plug bought from Amazon. It's literally the cheapest one I could find. And the reason I bought it is because it had a North American style socket on it and I actually needed a North American socket for something. And uh, this way I get a smart plug circuit so I get probably some sort of ESP32 module and uh, I get a 5 volt, 3.3 volt power supply and a relay circuit. So I get to have this this socket here that I wanted. So I'm, I'm just going to cannibalize it for all the parts it has. So I suppose in this video it can just be a teardown of um, of how it looks inside. And we can test it to see if it works. So off camera I've already set it up and it does work. Um, I'll demonstrate it. I've got my dangerous DEF adapter to test it with. So it powers up. And, um, but uh, it turns on and off the relay. And um, what we could do is we could see um, if, uh, if I can control it with uh, Google Voice Assistant. Turn on cheap. Wi-Fi smart plug. All right, turning on the cheap smart plug. Turn off the cheap smart plug. Okay, turning off the cheap smart plug. So we know it works. Now let's see if we can open this thing. Hopefully it's not too difficult to open. I'll start prying here along the side. But it looks like it's kind of glued together. But so far, it seems like we can get into it. Hopefully, I didn't break anything. Right, we're in. It's a shame I damaged the side there. So we have a 10 amp relay, a little switch mode power supply, and we have what looks like a proper fuse, 10 amp fuse. So it's not too bad really. Inside a cheap Amazon smart plug. Inrush resistor. Now it looks like uh, to get in there we'll have to unsolder these pins, which I don't think is going to be terribly easy. So I think uh, unsoldering these pins is going to be quite tough. I mean, I could try, but I think there's a lot of heat being sinked away from there. So I'm going to go for the option of um, using my Dremel bit and Dremeling around there so that a piece stays behind so I can remove this bit of plastic. So I shall be back shortly. Right, so for the magic of television, I've Dremeled all the way along there to liberate this bit of plastic. And I'm not going to put it back together again. It's just so that I can open it to have a look. So there we go. So the separation looks fairly good. There's a separation stripe cut out of the PCB for the earth there. And there's another one there. But bear in mind, this is not an insulated power supply. This is probably a buck converter, so it's still reference to mains voltage. There's no isolation transformer, it's just an inductor. Here's our little Wi Fi module. It seems to be an ESP8285 module. And all this along here is the power supply. The live comes in, goes through a fuse, 
feeds the relay. It then feeds the inrush resistor, which also acts as a fuse to protect the power supply if something goes wrong. And it looks like it's not using a full bridge rectifier, just a single diode. It's cheaping out a bit, but it does the job, I suppose. And then through some filtering, the little control chip, and then um, that makes up the switch mode power supply, which is like a, a buck converter to lower the voltage. And uh, yeah, we have probably a 3.3 volt regulator to supply the 3.3 volt that this module here needs. So what I think I will do, I will uh, remove this module and I'll keep it for a future project because it's handy. It's already set up. And um, I simply want the power supply to drive this relay. It's got the little transistor right there that switches this relay on and off. So I just need to feed the, the base of the transistor. Looks like it goes via this resistor here. Yeah. And it's not too bad. Could do with a, a heavier relay because uh, you can't plug an electric heater into this. I wouldn't trust this little relay. But just to switch lights on and off and light loads, it's okay. It's not too bad. Right. So what I've done is I've tacked a wire to the 3.3 volt output of the power supply, and I've tacked a wire onto the resistor. Uh, that feeds the transistor that triggers the relay. Um, that resistor goes to the base. So if I put 3.3 volts on there, it will trigger the relay. Because the circuit I'm building requires um, a 3.3 volt supply and a relay driver circuit. And I'm very lazy, so I'm not going to build all of that. If I buy one of these smart switches, I get my 3.3 volt supply, the 5 volt supply I need, and um, my reeling, relay driving circuit. So I can just focus on the little bit that, uh, that I need. This is all built in. And that's exactly what I want. So I can get rid of this little... Um, I can get rid of this little Wi-Fi board um, and save it for a future project and uh, I just have a power supply with a relay output. Okay well I've messed about with it quite a bit now. Um, I've removed this uh, socket piece out from the middle. It wasn't really necessary but uh, I'm going to use this for something else. Um, I actually need a North American style socket for, for another project. So I'm saving this bit. And um, I have tapped into the uh, 5 volt supply, uh, the ground, the 3.3 volt I've tapped into. I've tapped into the transistor that drives the relay. So you can trigger the relay with uh, an external microcontroller. You can power the microcontroller on 5 volt or 3.3 volts or whatever circuit you have. You can use this as a relay driving board. Um, you can keep the original um, ESP module or you can remove it and just use the power supply and relay driver and have your own Arduino or whatever control to this. Um, or you can even use it like a um, smart light switch. So I've attached uh, the two switch lines from this um, reactive um, switch, the one that comes back on its own. To the back there, I've soldered them to where this little um, tactile switch is soldered to. So you can trigger the unit that way manually. Gives you an external switch option. So I suppose this can be um, fitted neatly into um, into a little box, and um, it can be 
put above the ceiling or behind a light switch if you've got a neutral. Um, now this can work as a, a smart light switch to turn a light on and off. Or we can try to control it with Google Home. Turn on the test light. Sure, turning on the test light. Turn off the test light. Okay, turning the test light off. Yeah, so um, it went all the way from being a cheap Amazon smart socket to being various things, really. Um, the little ESP module at the back has lots of test points, so it can probably be reprogrammed. Uh, custom firmware put on it. Um, I'll probably end up unsoldering it and um, reusing it for something else. Um, I've also, when I removed, um, when I removed this piece, I've soldered these um, live and neutral supply wires directly onto the board, and um, the switched line out from the relay, uh, so that I can switch whatever I want directly without having to plug it into the uh, socket. Um, there's various things you can do. You can disconnect the live from one of the relay contacts, so it's a no volt contact, so you can use it to switch things on low voltage uh, without it having to switch live. So you can break that connection on the board. Um, it's very hackable and it's quite cheap. Um, now I just need to decide what to do with it. Um, you can use this like a, a Sonoff um, son Basic, basically. I'm sure some of you would probably um, want to reprogram this little module here. One thing that you'd have to keep in mind is this is not a an insulated supply. So this 3.3 volt and 5 volt output is reference domains voltage. So whatever you're powering from this um, this little board cannot you can't touch it. It has to be all inside an enclosure. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, it's quite good. It's a nice little hack. I might do a sprinkler system so it operates um, a a water valve, solenoid valve, and uh, to water the plants in the garden. That's controlled via Google Home on my phone. I know you can just buy a Sonoff Basic, but. Uh, it's just quite hackable, you know, and it's fun to mess around with things. Well, okay, guys, if taking things apart just to see what's inside and to hack them, repurpose them, modify them is your kind of thing, then uh, you should subscribe to my channel so that uh, YouTube can show you more of my videos and uh, we can all learn something from it. You guys can leave comments below and um, you can even make video suggestions for me and I'll, I might make a video on it then. And we can all have fun together in this little community of hackers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.